Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we are continuing our discussion of desktop environments and now we're gonna look at XFCE. So XFCE was an older project. This is 1996 is when it was started by Oliver Fordan who started it to create a Linux version of the common desktop environment. So if you remember the common desktop environment also provided some of the early inspiration between the GNOME project. Now what ended up happening is XFCE was originally an acronym for XForm Common Environment, XFCE, etc., uh, just because it was based on a project at the time called XForms, which ended up being some of the original downfall of the early adoption of XFCE because XForms has a license similar to WPS Office. It's not free and open source. It's free to use on a personal computer, but it is proprietary software and it is not open where the code could be audited. And because of this, XFCE, when it was first asked to be included inside of Debian and Red Hat, was rejected because it was based on XForm. And this caused a little bit of a problem for the developer. So Oliver decided to go back in, in 1999 with version 3 of XFCE. He rewrote the entire thing, no longer has any XForm code in it. He wrote rewrote all of it entirely based on GTK, so it had a GPL license to be included in any Linux distribution. And so that was really when XFCE really started to take off back in version 3. Now, of course, we're on version 4 now, now version 4.14, and the desktop has come a long way. The thing about this one, though, is this is the first one of these that we've looked at that's not completely tied to any one specific Linux distro. Well, I guess GNOME isn't either, but it's not tied to any one Linux distribution, but it is available on nearly every distribution that is available. Anything. You can put XFCE on it. And it's not just Linux either. You can also put it on BSD, any other uh, Unix type system. Now, XFCE always has been and remains today to be very light on resources, making it the ideal choice for any build that you are doing, which is on lower spec or lightweight hardware. And many distributions have utilized XFCE as the core desktop environment to make sure that they are light on resources. Anything from MX Linux to Linux Lite, which use XFCE for the lightweight resources, and Cubes also uses it because Cubes is a system intensive, resource intensive desktop, but they wanted to use the lightest desktop possible to make room for the other resources being the other VMs that are making Cubes work. And so with all of that being said, XFCE is excellent. Out of the box, you get a complete desktop environment, which is feels complete when you're comparing it against something like GNOME, which has practically zero functionality built into it. Some people might consider it a little bit bloated. It has its own archive manager, which is not part of the core, but you can definitely install it. It has so many other system tools, resources. It uses a file manager that is going to be a, a very common experience to most people. It's not quite like Nautilus in that like with GNOME has Nautilus where everything's kind of built into it, but it has the functionality that you would expect with it transferring files a lot across most other systems. So I really like Thunar better than, uh, than Nautilus personally. Now out of the box, it's complete and it's flexible with simple configuration options available from the GUI for anybody to do. But if you are a little bit more of an advanced user, you can actually mess with all the configuration files under the hood and cause a lot of full-fledged customization to it. So you have excessive options for those who want to learn the coding and get under the hood, but you have enough good options for the average user to get in, start using the system, and be comfortable with it. Now its layout is very much like any other uh, Windows traditional type layout. You typically have a panel on the bottom, although some distributions like MX Linux will put it on the side. Some of them like Zubuntu will put it up on the top, but most distributions do put it 
on the bottom, just like a traditional setup. You have a menu and there's a couple different menus you have available to you. You have the whisker menu, which is a little bit more modern and advanced and that you have search functions and favorites you can pin to the menu, or you just have the very simple menu. It also has the ability to plug in your menu on your context key on your desktop. So right click somewhere you can full, pull down the access of all the applications or anything else that you want all within the system itself. So overall, there are so many functions and features to it. Inside of the settings panel, there's a variety of, of easy to use options that will give you anything from Windows compositing to theming to icon packs. You also have tools for managing your networks, your sound systems, your monitor settings. All of these are functions that we find easily within XFCE without any real problems but it doesn't have so many options like Plasma where you seem to get lost. So overall, XFCE is kind of this middle of the ground. It's good on pretty much everything. It has just enough options to allow anybody to configure your systems, but does not completely overwhelm you. So it's a good balance between both GNOME and Plasma, both of which we looked at on this channel earlier because it doesn't have no options at all, like GNOME is just extendable by third-party plugins, but it doesn't have so many options that you get completely lost in it, like can happen in Plasma. So it's a good middle of the road. As far as the overall pros, the overall pros of XFCE, number one, it is available on anything that's a Linux or Unix type system. And the installation is pretty much the same. Although if you get head on over to their website looking at installing it on a variety of different systems and tools, you'll actually find that it's, it's very easy to install on nearly anything. Usually it's just XFCE desktop. I forget the exact command off the top of my head, but I'll go ahead and link that um, uh, either on the screen or in the comments down below. It's also very minimal. So whereas GNOME default out of the box, GNOME takes a lot of system resources. And yes, I know some people are like, oh, you can configure it to this. Yeah, but we're not talking about getting here and configuring everything. You open it up, you install it, you run it. It's super light on resources. As little as 300 megabytes on some systems, although around 500 megabytes is pretty much average compared to GNOME's about one 1 1.2 gig which is on average for that. Um, additionally, it is very easy to get all of your customizations. Very easy for your customizations. So with that, you can get in there, you can make the changes, you can make the tweaks, whether they color styles or other things like that. Now, what are the cons? Well, the, one of the first major cons, and one of the reasons I'm not a huge fan of it, is it does tend to look dated. There's some distributions like Manjaro, which is what we're looking at here on the background. Manjaro is, in my opinion, the best out-of-the-box experience with XFCE. That's why I selected it to, to showcase and feature what the desktop looks like. This looks really good. Most out of the box installations of XFCE, they do look fairly dated. The coloring and theming options are also fairly limited in what you're doing in that, but overall it does provide the, the use that you need. The next thing is it does lack the modern features. So GNOME has a lot of your modern features built directly into it, whether you're talking about touch screens or online accounts or syncing calendars across different devices or things like that. All that's built into GNOME. All that has some modular built-in functionality on Plasma. XFCE, to my knowledge, does not have any of that. So if you are wanting to integrate your calendars, if you want to be able to easily use your calendars, of course you can always use Evolution, which will do that across any Linux distribution. And that way it doesn't tie into the system anyway. So I don't know, maybe that's a positive for a channel like mine where we talk about privacy. But for those people that want to use those features, you do not have online account options. You don't have those, those features. Can you get it? Probably, is it built into the desktop? No, and that's the point we're talking about. Now the last part is if you do really wanna do some excessive customization, XFCE will require you to get into the system files. You will need to know some advanced um, CSS style sheets. You'll have to know a little bit more about uh, about how to, the configuration files are working. The documentation is out there, but it is a little bit more complicated. So if you're wanting to completely and fully customize absolutely everything on your computer, you're probably not going to want to use XFCE unless you want to get into the in-depth of your desktop environment. So that is really the, the XFCE, the very brief history. 
what it's about, what you might use it for. Is it a good desktop? Absolutely, it's a great desktop. Is it absolutely the, the winner king of all? Mm, I don't know. For me, it's, it's maybe in the top five for sure. Of course, there's not a lot of desktop environments out there, but it is definitely decent. It's exceptionally good at what it does, but it does seem to lack some of the, the fujois of some of the other desktops that are out there. And as we continue on this series, as we look into things like Budgie or Deepin or, or uh, Cinnamon, we'll, we'll kind of see what we're talking about here. But overall, for what it does, XFCE is an awesome choice, and I definitely recommend checking out on any distribution that you otherwise like to use. So thanks for coming along on this video, and have a look at the links in the description down below if you want to help support Switch to Linux and uh, see the other videos that we have on this channel. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.